Good evening, and thank you so much for being with us here tonight to learn a little bit more about Seminole County 4-H. My name is Karen Henry, and I am the 4-H Youth Development Extension Agent here in Seminole County. Good evening. I am Shane Michael. I'm the County Extension Director, as well as one of the other 4-H Youth Development Agents here in Seminole County. So we very much appreciate you all being here to learn a little bit about our program and how you can be involved and the type of opportunities that we offer. So tonight we're going to start off with talking a little bit about how you can get involved with the program, both our young people who may be interested in joining 4-H, as well as our parents and grown-up friends. We're going to talk about ways to connect uh, to the 4-H program. We're going to explain a little bit about the 4-H events and activities that are offered through the program, talk about 4-H projects, talk a little bit about scholarships that are available to young people who participate in our program, and then we will finish it up with questions. I do want to point out as we get started that at the bottom of your screen, you will notice a Q&A, a question and answer box. If you have questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to drop them in there. And any questions that are not answered at the end of the presentation, we will make sure um, to do that um, once we get uh, wrap up our presentation. So our 4-H our program leader likes to describe 4-H as a buffet of opportunities, and I think that that is a very accurate description. 4-H is a large program with a lot of opportunities in terms of ways that youth are able to be engaged, the events, activities, and competitions that we offer, the types of projects and learning experiences that are available to young people, and the level that they have the opportunity to participate. So as you listen to the information tonight, be thinking about what you feel may be best for you and your family. Um, there are varying levels of involvement and you can choose as many things off of the buffet as you would like. So some ways of getting the youth involved would be joining what we call our community clubs. And these are just 4-H clubs that meet anywhere around the county um, and are adult led. We have what we call our county 4-H club. So we do have one club that meets here at our office that Karen and myself take the lead on. And this is kind of a great introduction to what 4-H is. We kind of focus a little bit on uh, different projects each month and then give them a taste of what 4-H has to offer. We have a special interest or what we call spin clubs. And these are short-term clubs, usually lasting about six to seven weeks, um, a little more intense, but they focus in at a very concentrated time. Um, instead of spending the whole year, they just focus in on that six weeks. We have uh, leadership opportunities through our county youth council. 4-H um, also offers school enrichment. So for some of you, who have youth who are in middle school um, in sixth grade or had youth in sixth grade here in Seminole County, you might remember a public speaking contest uh, formerly known as the 4-H Tropicana. It is now known as the Florida Public Speaking Contest, but if you do recall that, that was actually um, a contest and a program put on by 4-H and our office. Uh, we do have some after-school programs depending on the school. Some teachers like to set up some activities for youth and form their own clubs. And then we also offer camps and day camps. So we do have some residential overnight camping opportunities as well as shorter day um, camping opportunities um, offered during spring break time or during the summer months. So we looked at how the youth can get involved. And then as adults, what are some ways that adults can be involved? We are always in the need of great volunteers. 4-H is a youth adult partnership. Um, and what that means is we offer programming for youth, but we couldn't do it without the help of adults um, providing that caring um, environment and those safe environments. So for adults, we're always looking for club leaders. Um, this is a great way to get involved. If your youth is already going to be there and you're coming to the club meetings, why not step up and be a club leader? Um, 
We also are looking for project leaders. So maybe you have an expertise um, in a certain project area that you would like to uh, provide knowledge and activities for the youth. We have uh, those spin clubs. We're always looking for um, club leaders to offer just again, six weeks in and out opportunities, as well as school enrichment leaders, um, helping us go into the schools and providing classroom activities. Um, with Seminole County 4-H, we do have an association that uh, helps us, uh, Karen and I, to run the program. So we have a part that looks at it, an advisory committee, uh, kind of giving us advice on what the youth need in the community. Um, they also do a financial part of it. So they help us out with our budgeting for the year. And then we also have, um, Karen, you'll have to help me. I forgot the third part of it already. Budgeting, volunteers, and um, finances. Finances. So, but the volunteering portion of it. So, I didn't forget. It was already talked about. Mm -hmm. And then we also have many events and activities, and we'll talk more about um, those. But we have them at the club level, we have them at the county level, the district level, the state level, the regional level, all the way up into the national level. So uh, the 4-H year officially starts September 1st. So we are in the process of forming 4-H clubs now. And 4-H uh, clubs need at least two or more adult volunteer leaders. Um, so parents or friends or grownups or grandparents um, or adults that are interested in working with young people, at least two of those. Um, to start a club, five youth, um, at youth ages five to 18. So five as of September 1st is how we determine age in the 4-H program. And our year runs from September 1st to the end of August. Um, in addition to having at least two adults and at least five kids, uh, we really want to have a place where young people get the opportunity to learn by doing. So this is hands-on learning where the youth are engaged in their learning process. And it's through what we call hands-on projects. Lots of times uh, projects are hobbies or particular interest areas of youth. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. 4-H clubs also need a safe place to meet, and uh, we have had clubs that have met all over the county. A plan for regular meetings and activities. Most clubs meet a minimum of at least once a month during the school year, so se typically September or October through the end of May, as well as doing activities throughout the year, including community service, events, and uh, sometimes celebrating the holidays. And lastly, a belief in youth leadership and youth officers. As Shane mentioned earlier, 4-H is an organization that is all about the youth adult partnership. So we want to make sure that that youth voice is at the table in all levels of our program. So a little bit about some of the volunteer roles that we have. Um, and so the 4-H club leader works with a group of youth on a regular basis. And so that would be that September to May to teach life skills and project leaders for at least one year. So if you are someone who may be interested in doing something or teaching kids, but want to commit on a shorter term level, then a spin club, that special interest club might be an opportunity. We are also um, open to people who are interested in teaching workshops and sharing their skills in a particular subject matter or hobby. So it's a flexible schedule and we call that the project leader. Some clubs have project leaders um, so that they are able to offer multiple projects within a given club. And then lastly, the 4-H advisory board member. So they help to provide direction on the program and uh, garner resources to support. And the, that advisory committee meets on a quarterly basis um, to be able to move the 4-H program forward. This is a short overview of our volunteer process. Um, and so as people become connected to the program, uh, learn a little bit more about it and think that they want to get involved, our registration system is called 4-H Online. So adults who are interested in volunteering with the program start with a 4-H Online registration. 
because we are a youth development organization and believe in youth protection, there is a required youth protection training of all volunteers. This is done online with a quiz associated with it. After those steps are completed, then an interview is scheduled uh, with the 4-H agent. This can be in person, over the telephone, or on Zoom um, to learn a little bit more about what you are, how you're interested in getting involved, as well as share information about the program. Then there's fingerprinting and background screening. If all comes back as it should, then there is 4-H volunteer orientation. And after the orientation, we do have continued training throughout the year. We have quarterly volunteer leader meetings, and you get the opportunity to be able to share your skills, knowledge, and talents with young people while having fun. So many times uh, we ask, why are youth interested in joining 4-H. And there are two main reasons that youth join, and that is fun and friends. Most of the time when young people want to join our program, it's because they're interested in meeting other young people and they're interested in having fun. Um, they are also interested oftentimes in learning about a particular area, but fun and friends are the top two reasons that young people join our program. And while those reasons may also be the case for why parents wish for their young people to join 4-H, uh, we polled our leaders and volunteers and parents who are involved in the program. And some of the big reasons that they said that they either initially got involved or stay involved as volunteers are for a number of different reasons. And the first of those is learning, opportunities for young people to learn. So as we talked about with the um, earlier with being able to join, so we're now going to kind of talk a little bit about other reasons or ways to get in. And so the 4-H club. So we talked about the 4-H club meetings. Um, these can also be club workshops can happen during this time. They do a lot of community service. We like to see the youth get out there. Um, real quick, our 4-Hs stand for the head, heart, hands, and health. So we try and incorporate each one of these uh, components in there. So when we talk about our hands, we want to give our hands to larger service for those community service projects. Um, if you're interested in a club, as Karen was saying earlier, all you need is five youth from at least two different families. Uh, most neighborhoods have that very easily. So setting up a club is a great way to get started. Another aspect of learning is the idea of the 4-H project. And as I mentioned earlier, this might be a particular area that a young pe a person is learning about. So as you see here, we have some um, young people that are participating in STEM activities, going on a hike, doing horses. These are just three examples of some of the projects that we offer in the program. And the projects are all about hands-on learning. Our program is open to youth ages 5 to 18, and we do have projects for all of those ages, but our 5 to 7-year-olds are known as Clover Buds, and so Clover Buds very much focus on learning together in a group learning experience. In 4-H, there are over 50 different projects for young people to choose from. And so if they have a given interest, there is a good, there is a high likelihood that 4-H has a project that's going to meet that particular interest. The other part of projects is that the learning is experiential. So it's all about hands-on learning. And while youth are doing these projects, they are not only learning those subject matter skills, but also life skills like communication and team building and getting along with others and learning the importance of giving back to their communities. Young people who do projects have an opportunity to be able to set goals and learn about goal setting, keep records, and share what they learn. And they also have opportunities to participate in events and activities at all levels um, of the 4-H program. 
So another big area that we focus in on is that leadership component. And this can be in many different ways. Some people think that leading or leadership comes directly from leading a group or having to take on an officer position. And while that is a large part of 4-H, we also look at other ways of incorporating a leadership um, into the 4-H Youths Project. So some youth leadership opportunities um, do take place at the county, the district, and the state level. So looking at this chart, we can start kind of at the bottom and we have what we call our county council um, or in some other uh, counties, you might have heard of them called as the Teen Leadership Club or TLC. Uh, from those, we have groups that come from the clubs. And so they come, they represent their clubs, they elect officers that then represent the full Seminole County. And that group of youth come together and help us to put together all of our events, all of our activities. They represent us at different fundraising events and marketing events. And they're really kind of the face of what Seminole County 4-H is. From there, we have some of those youth then represent us at a district council, which is made up of representatives from each of the counties in the district. Um, we are in District 8, which does include Lake County, Orange County, Osceola County, uh, Seminole County, and Volusia County. Uh, from that district council, a few of those youth represent the Florida 4-H Executive Board. So we send four representatives from each district. And then at our state conference um, in the end of the summer, um, the newly elected officers get together and they then appoint 30 other positions to form what we call our state executive board. Um, so they don't have to necessarily be on that district council in order to represent at a state level. There's more opportunities for them. Um, and then we do have our 4-H State Council, um, who is our electing officials of that, and each county sends two representatives to um, cast those votes in order to elect our eight state council officers. So for our own county um, youth council, it is a youth adult partnership. So as uh, Karen was saying earlier, we want the youth to have the that voice. And so they run these meetings. They uh, set the agendas, they make the decisions, they have those discussions. Um, and then really as advisors, Karen and myself and other adults who uh, work with this group, we tend to sit back on our hands, let them go. Uh, we talk in 4-H that sometimes failure is a good thing as long as we can do it in a safe environment. So we really allow that to happen. And as adults, we don't want to push that prog uh, progress. We want to see the youth do it as well. And so this does, again, give them those leadership skills. It gives them some civic engagement and dialogue. Um, and then also representative leadership. So again, they're representing their club, um, but they're also representing Seminole County 4-H. At our district level, it's all very similar. So again, we look for that youth adult leadership. Um, we want those youth to have that voice. They do help to plan our district level events. So as all those five counties get together to provide um, bigger events and bigger opportunities for these youth, those youth are again at the steering committees uh, putting on these events and helping us to decide exactly how they need to be run. Um, and again, we also have a big component of community service. How can we get out there and ensure that we're serving our communities? At the state level, we do have state 4-H officers um, that then form that executive board. And again, we talked about 30 other um, appointed positions. And so it's a very large group. Um, that's headed up across the state, and they do have three meetings throughout the year um, all across the state. They usually do one up in the north, um, one in the central, one down in the south area. Um, so it also gives opportunities for those older youth, 14 to 18, to see other parts of the state as well as um, interact with youth from all over the state. We do have that district representative, and then our county delegates um, represent Seminole County on that committee. to be engaged through 4-H clubs and other group learning opportunities and youth leadership. Something else that parents said that they uh, really were interested in getting their child involved was through county and district level events. There are a number of events that are open to young people to be able to share what they learn. One of those is county events, and county events um, takes place in the spring, 
And so after young people have worked on their 4-H project for a number of months, they get the opportunity to be able to share what they learn in multiple different forms. So one of those is the exhibit night, which is what you're seeing the picture of on the screen. We also have poster contest and photography contest, graphic design, sewing and fashion review, and game boards, which is a simple circuit where young people build a simple circuit to be able to teach um, other people about what they are learning. Another activity that we have is called Share the Fun, and Share the Fun is a talent and variety show. So if you have youth who are interested in the performing arts, um, interested in getting up on stage, there is an opportunity to be able to participate in this. Uh, the acts are three to five minutes long. There is a county competition for all ages, five to 18. And then the top winners from the county competition for those youth that are eight to 18 get an opportunity to participate at a district competition. And that district winner gets the opportunity to be able to go on to the state competition, which takes place in the summer um, at our showcase event called 4HU, which we're going to talk a little bit about um, to be able to represent our district there. Something else that um, young people learn a lot about is they get the opportunity to practice public speaking. And we all know how important public speaking and communication skills are to everyone. And so we have a number of 4-H presentation competitions where young people are able to put together a demonstration or illustrated talk or a speech about their particular project area. So whether it is filmmaking or hiking or sewing or horticulture, they are able to share what they are learning um, through a public speaking experience. So moving on from our county and district level, we do have quite a few opportunities at the state level. One of those opportunities are our competitive events, um, are our judging teams. And so 4-H offers a wide variety of competitions for the youth to um, learn about evaluation, making decisions, um, comparing items, defending their answers through oral reasons. Um, and we do all of those through our judging teams. And so just a sampling of what's offered is there is a forestry judging, there's a livestock judging, land judging, horticulture ID judging. We have horse judging, hippology, which is a um, big contest that surrounds all around horses. Uh, we have poultry judging, marine science, um, and this list is not even all inclusive. There's even meat judging, dairy judging, um, just about anything you think that you could judge and compare for each probably has a contest for them. Um, for our younger, what we call our intermediates, um, and these would be our 11 to 13 year olds, we do have a conference for them that's known as the Intermediate Leadership Conference or the I-LEAD Conference. Um, and during this, it's an opportunity for them to um, experience kind of what some of those state level events are. Um, they get a little sampling of many different state events that are open up to the seniors, the older youth. But this is their kind of first opportunity um, to participate in a weekend conference. Um, this past year, it was held up at the University of Florida. They got to stay in the UF dorms uh, while they were up there and then uh, participate in a lot of different workshops um, during that week. Or I'm sorry, that weekend. Another fun event is what we call our legislature event. And so at this event, those uh, senior members, our 14 to 18 year olds have the opportunity to travel up to Tallahassee and they actually participate in a mock legislative session and they take on many different roles. Um, they can come as a lobbyist and so they will join a community group. They will um, kind of form ideas of what bills should be passed and what bills should not be passed. And then as their name sounds, they actually play the role of a lobbyist and they go before the other youth who are representatives and senators and plead their case for them and try and get them to sway their vote one way or another. Uh, for the youth who have been before, um, have a little more experience, they usually come in either as a representative um, or they come in as a senator. And so we actually are in the chambers up at the Tallahassee um, 
uh, state capital. And so they get to spend the week in the capital. They spend the week at the um, FSU dorms. And so it's an opportunity and they start all the way from these and those executive boards planning their own bills. They write their own bills. So this is very much a youth led um, idea. So the bills that they are discussing and that they're debating and voting on actually come from these youth um, and their own ideas. And so it can get very intense. It can be a lot of fun. Um, the other option is, is if you if a youth is more interested in maybe journalism um, or news broadcasting, we also have a um, communications group and they actually help to put out a daily paper. They help to do interviews. They help to do press conferences. And our state uh, 4-H officers will act as our governor, who usually has the opportunity to veto a bill, and then the House and the Senate get to see if they can override those vetoes. Uh, we also do a lieutenant governor, so they have a very wide array and a very immersive uh, program for this. And Florida is one of the very few states that actually offers this, and it's one of the longest running. They just hit their 50th year this past summer, so um, it is definitely a strong and a very great program. I've enjoyed going and uh, chaperoning this many times. Another one is our state conference. And so we call this one 4-H University. Um, for some of you who maybe were in 4-H years ago, um, this used to be known as 4-H Congress. And then we kind of changed the name up a little bit because uh, people didn't quite understand Congress and they got it confused with legislature. So uh, we went the route of 4-H University. So uh, this is a week long up at the University of Florida campus. Uh, they stay in dorms up there and attend workshops um, all week. It's also where we hold those state competitions. So the youth who qualified to give their public speaking, their demonstration, their illustrated talk are up there. Uh, the state share the fun contest uh, takes place up there. Um, and this is also where they hold their state executive board meetings and do their election of officers. From there, we do have some national events uh, that youth are able to participate on. Uh, one of them is called Citizen Washington or Citizenship Washington Focus. Uh, we call it uh, C CWF. So with this one, they actually spend a week up in DC learning more about the federal government side. Uh, very similar to the legislator. It's not a mock legislative session, but it's an opportunity just to learn more about the federal side. Um, a lot of touring happens at that time. Um, and this is a great opportunity. They don't have to win a contest to go to it. This is open to anybody and everybody who would like to uh, participate. And they usually uh, focus the uh, time frame um, during an election year right around inauguration. So if they can, then they will actually take the youth to uh, one of the inauguration uh, areas uh, for them to be able to witness that. Well, we also have what we call National 4-H Conference. And so this is one that the youth apply uh, to attend this. And it is based off of a, um, application, a resume, um, and an interview process. And then those youth will then go and spend um, a couple of days in DC. And this is an opportunity for them to kind of talk about 4-H on a national level, meet other youth from across the nation. And they really kind of focus in on youth um, topics that youth are find important. And it really does kind of help to drive um, the direction of 4-H on a national level, which then moves back down into the uh, state levels. Um, then we have National 4-H Congress. Again, this is one that they apply for, uh, they interview for, and then they're awarded um, on this trip. And we take a few more to this one. Um, and this one is National 4-H Congress in Atlanta, Georgia. And it typically happens um, around Thanksgiving time, usually the weekend of Thanksgiving. Uh, and it's, again, opportunity for the youth to go up, meet kids from all around um, the U.S. and participate in different learning workshops. Um, being part of those judging teams also has the advantage of if you are on a judging team that wins state levels, many of them move on to a regional level. So for horticulture, it varies. It happens at one of the National Horticulture Society meetings. And so as that meeting moves around, they move that contest around with them. Forestry judging, the uh, contest is held in West Virginia. Poultry judging happens at the Eastern National Roundup, which is in Kentucky in November. Uh, dairy uh, judging is also done at the Eastern National Roundup in Kentucky. The horse uh, competitions, and horse is a little bit different that we have a competition for horse judging. We have it in Hippology, we have it in Quiz Bowl, um, and then each one of those uh, speaking contests as well, the demonstrations, illustrative talks, as well as the public speaking. Um, youth from there can actually qualify from county to district to state to regionals and then on to nationals. And so nationals is held in, um, at the Eastern National in Kentucky. 
And then livestock, um, the first place team moves on to Western Nationals, which is out in Colorado. Um, again, that one happens, I think, usually around in January. So it's a fun opportunity for a lot of those young Floridians who have never seen snow have the opportunity to go out to Colorado and it's almost guaranteed they will see snow. Um, usually it's just a little flurry, a little dusting, but they think that it's the best thing in the world um, to witness that. Um, and then we did talk about the horse public speaking contests. Um, and then on select years, it kind of varies, um, but we have been had the opportunity that youth who have won the public speaking at the state level at Fort University have also been invited to the Western National in Colorado. to be a part of the program and stay involved is the scholarship opportunities that are available to young people. And these are scholarships that are available for both college as well as career and technical education. On a given year at the county level, the Seminole County 4-H Association provides almost $5,000 in college scholarships every year. At the district level, there are opportunities to be able to be awarded scholarships for a variety of different project areas. And so there have been scholarships given for horse and citrus and leadership, so a number of opportunities there. And the Florida 4-H Foundation on the state level provides over $30,000 in scholarships and national 4-H trips and awards to members each year. So providing those young people an opportunity to be able to continue their education um, after they graduate from high school. So with so, that, we have had um, a couple of questions that have come into the question and answer, um, but as you have a moment to kind of sit back and maybe digest a little bit, um, if you would like, you can certainly go ahead and put in some questions there. And I believe Karen also has a poll um, that will have a couple of questions that we would um, greatly appreciate if everybody could take a few moments to complete these poll questions. Um, it is 100% anonymous, um, but this does help Karen and I uh, this is the first time that we have offered um, this program. Uh, we answer a lot of these questions individually, so we thought this would be a great way to um, answer all these questions at one time, as well as get feedback from um, everyone. So please uh, take a moment to fill out those um, and help us to uh, better the program and provide any more information that we need. And as we're wrapping up, uh, please feel free to continue to put questions in the question and answer box. Uh, one of the questions that we did get was, will this recording be available? And the answer is yes. Um, and so the recording um, will be available um, soon after. So another question that just popped up is, are there existing clubs to join for youth who are ages five to seven, or do you need to find members to create a club? So at this point in time in our program, um, we are in the process of forming 4-H clubs. And so um, putting together interested youth and adult volunteers who wish to form clubs, um, and so if you would like additional information about that, we will definitely send follow up information um, after this webinar um, and as well as try to connect people that may be have similar interest or similar geographic areas within the county. Um, as a follow up question, um, there's been a couple of questions about how to find out about groups that are already formed. Um, so you are welcome to form one, but the groups that uh, will be formed and are formed. So we have just wrapped up one 4-H year and are getting ready for the next one. Um, and so we do not know what type of space will be available in clubs that functioned last year, but we will be having an in-person 4-H open house at the beginning of October. 
So at this point in time, we're trying to connect people who are interested in forming clubs and uh, getting their young people involved. And if you need additional clarification with any of the answers that I'm getting verbally, please, please let us know. Uh, but one of the other questions that we got is, is uh, I'm in Orange County, but closer to Seminole, can my kids join Seminole County? And the short answer is yes. Um, each county has its own 4-H program, but there is an opportunity to join neighboring counties, especially if that is wor what works best for your family geographically and or with particular project areas that are offered. Um, so that is an option. Um, I believe that now you are actually able to select Seminole as a drop down menu within the 4-H online system, um, but we do fill out what we call a cross county agreement between staff and counties and that's just to keep the lines of communication open um, for those who may live or have a zip code in one county but wish to participate across county lines. Yes, and there's a couple of questions about current club lists. So the short answer is the club list is not yet available. Um, and so it will definitely be available by um, October 6th um, for our 4-H open house. Um, we are finishing up confirming with volunteers about who is coming back um, to volunteer and space available. So when that is available, we will make it, uh, or when it is ready, we will make it available. Um, but at this point in time, we do not have a, a current club list. So we have a question about youth registration and thank you for asking that. Um, so once you get into 4-H online, uh, two of the questions that you are gonna be asked are what is your 4-H club and what is your 4-H project area? So we very much want to be able to have people connected to a club and have an idea of which project area they're interested in participating in uh, before registering. However, even though registration opens on September 1st, it is open year round. So it will be open um, after the open house on the 6th and onward. Um, so it is 4-H uh, registration is open at any time. There is a $20 annual fee um, that is paid regardless of what time of year you join. And so um, that's, a, that's an annual fee that helps to cover materials and supplies and some of those types of things. Um, but yes, there you can uh, register for 4-H at any point in time. So in answer to uh, 4-H online, if you are able to choose Seminole County in the drop down, do that. If not, and it defaults to your home county, um, if you will reach out to us, then we will make sure that you get moved to the correct county on our end. Um, so let us let us know if that's the case. So another question that we have is uh, if they have another adult who might be interested in a forming a 4-H club, do they need to take the webinar first? Um, so the short answer is no, the webinar is not required. It may be helpful and we will have the link available um, to share if people are interested in getting a little bit more information about the program before committing. Um, but also, if you have interest or know of some people that do, um, we are definitely open to follow up conversations um, and we can connect about that.
So the question is, can you give some examples of clubs that could still be formed? So many of our clubs are community based, but they typically choose a project area or areas to focus on. And so, um, and that is completely open to the 50 projects that are offered. So 4-H offers everything from STEM and agriculture to public speaking and performing arts to horticulture, health and nutrition, cooking and everything in between. So if there is a given interest, there is a good likelihood that we have a 4-H project that we will be able to connect young people to. And we are open to clubs of any of those things. So pretty much any project area that you are interested and or your child is interested in um, could be um, something that a 4-H club is formed around. So one of the questions is, do we register before uh, we know if a group is open? So we recommend that um, there is a connection to a group uh, before registering. You are welcome to register, but what ends up happening is that um, until the clubs are fully formed and project areas are selected, you'll essentially be pending in our online system. So we want to make sure that there is a physical place for everybody as well as an opportunity um, to be able to, to be online. So question, does the fee differ depending on the age? I believe that currently Clover Buds, five to seven year olds are not charged the annual fee. Is that correct, Shane? That is how I remember it, yes. Okay, so five to seven get essentially an introductory offer um, to try 4-H out and then eight to 18 is uh, $20 annually. And there are some clubs that do charge a club fee, um, and the club leaders would explain that, but all that money goes directly to the club to help offset supplies or buy club t-shirts. Um, and then point of clarification for interested new families. Um, yes, you have two different options at this point in time. So if you are interested in forming a club um, and getting additional information, that is one option. The second option is that um, club spaces, we will know what type of availability there is at our open house on the 6th. So those are, are two options to be able to connect um, to the program. Oh, okay. And thank you for the clarification. So one of the questions that we got is if you have children who are different ages, so, um, and, and that sort of thing. So our clubs, many of our clubs um, have youth from ages five to 18 that participate. Now within that given club, they may break up into smaller groups or by age to do specific projects, just because what a five-year-old may be interested in or able to do is going to be very different than what a 13-year-old is able or interested to do. Um, but there are opportunities to be able to have all the children of the family involved in one club. Um, and so um, even if they are five to seven, um, we very much encourage group learning with that, um, but some clubs will build that, that in for that age group. Uh, another question that we got is where can we find these 50 areas of interest? Uh, we will send that out. The other thing we will do is make sure that we post it on our website because I don't think it's currently there. So we will add it there, but we will send a follow-up email with that full project list. So thank you for asking that question.
And I believe we did get all the questions, but if you think of any others, please feel free to put it in the question and answer box. Um, we very much appreciate you joining us tonight uh, for your time, for your thoughtful questions, um, and for being here. And uh, we will follow up with additional information about the program. And between now and then, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to us as well. Thank you for your time.